Hey you, and welcome back to Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. My name is Satchmo, and this is episode 5. Today we are going to rendezvous two vessels in orbit of Kerbin. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to get a whole bunch of science from Kerbal Space Center. So um, it's a really quick and easy way to do things. So let's go ahead and load up the survey plane. And let's delete some of the parts that we don't need. You'll see momentarily why I'm doing this. This will all become clear soon. I'm going to move the science instruments right here by the door. Okay. Take that off and put the science junior on because we haven't we didn't have the science junior last time, but now we do. And let's take some more wings and put them like this away, moving them out so they're not clipping as much. There we go, that looks okay. Put some wheels on them. Um, yep, that looks good. So yeah, big, nice, wide wheelbase and um, got the wings on there. Okay, so this is not going to fly, this is just going to drive around, right? This is going to be a science buggy. Very cool. Um, oh yeah, all of our instruments are right here by the door, which are, is, is important. We can put this a little closer. There we go. Save that. Let's put Bob in there, who is our resident scientist. And all we're going to do is we're going to drive around KSC collecting science because each of these buildings at, at Kerbal Space Center are a uh, different biome or is a different biome, whatever. Right, so you can get um, science from the R&D center, you can get science from the VAB, you can get science from the space plane hangar, so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, we're going to do just that. I'm going to use this little mod here to help us out. It says that I haven't, uh, I don't have the material studies for this area, so let's go ahead and do that. Observe the material studies. Keep the experiment. Click on the storage unit. And click collect. And then I can hop out and do a little EVA and click on this and click restore and that's going to make me uh, that's going to allow me to use this uh, again so there we go press b to hop back in oops i actually only got two of these but it's not a big deal all right cool now we're going to do this all over ksc uh, i'm going to quick save constantly though because um, as you're driving over these little ledges right here oops turn off the brake you uh, your, your your plane can just blow up so that does happen sometimes. So I'm not going to show you all this, I'm just going to demonstrate it maybe one more time, what I'm, what exactly I'm doing, and then uh, you can feel free to get exactly like that. Sometimes the thing will just blow up. Let me reload it. <clears throat> you could probably design this a little bit better so it doesn't do that. Um, yeah, because it is pretty low to the ground. Take the brake off. Let's see if I can come down a little bit more shallow and stop my plane from exploding. There we go. Maybe. There we go. And we see I'm already at a new biome, right? We're at the Shores biome, landed. So let's go ahead and do all the experiments that we can do. We can do a crew port. We can do a temperature, a barometer reading, goo, and science junior. There we go. Click collect, so it collects all of those things. Do an EVA. EVA report, there we go. Click on this guy to store your EVA report, and then you can click on the goo to restore that. Click on the science junior to restore that. Hop back in, and then there we go. All the science is in this little guy, and everything is reset so we can do it all again. I'll we'll go ahead and press F5 to quick save. Again, this thing will just kind of explode sometimes. Turn off the brake, and then we will drive over here to the administration building and see if we can get some more science. I'm going to see if I can make it onto the, uh, over by the admin building. 
and then uh, I'll edit out the rest of this because I'll do it by myself because you don't need to see me do it over and over and over again. But anyway, yeah, this is something that you can do on your own to just drive around KSC and uh, get a whole bunch of science for practically cheap, uh, practically free. Let's take this kind of slow so we don't explode. That is the only uh, kind of annoying thing about this. If, some, I haven't, if you haven't designed your craft particularly well. Oh, yep, there we go. See, I'm stuck on this little ledge here. <laughs> That's too funny. So yeah, you see how the next 15 minutes are going to go for me while I'm doing this. But anyway, yeah, you can you can probably pull these wheels down a little bit, or maybe even angling the wings would be better. There we go. You probably angle these wings down a little bit to give you a little bit more clearance. But anyway, now that we are at the administration building, you see I have all the science, and I can do all the science again, right? Crew report, temperature, and so on and so forth. And this is all I'm going to do. I'm just going to come around here, and I'm going to collect all the different science from all of the different uh, different places, do an EVA report, there we go, collect, restore, collect, restore, store everything in there, press B, quick save in case I blow up, and then that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to drive around all these little buildings and uh, collect all the data that I can, and then I'll see you after the edit, bye. Alright, I'm back. I have driven around all the different uh, complexes and uh, and collected all the science. We're going to recover the vessel and see what that netted us. I think I got all of them. We'll see. Um, 191 science. So yeah, a pretty significant amount of science for just driving around the space center itself. And you can make a little bit better of a buggy than I did, but uh, anyway. There we go, 191 science. I just wanted to show you guys that before we move on. Uh, you can do this really early in the game. Pretty much as soon as you get, um, I mean, well, you could, yeah, as soon as you get um, aerodynamics, or whatever that one is. So, so, anyway, there we go. Now let's work on rendezvousing the two vessels in space. First thing is we're going to go to R&D. We're going to grab flight control. This is going to give us a couple extra wings and a small inline reaction wheel, which we still won't be using for a little while, but they're uh, handy to have. And then we're going to jump right across to advanced flight control, which is going to be your inline stabilizer and lander can, which is pretty handy. Some monopropellant uh, and some thruster blocks, which is uh, really what we need. All the, We need the thruster blocks more than anything. Okay, we're also going to come down to electrics and grab some electricity. We see we have a ton of science, so let's spin some of it. This is going to give us uh, probodobodyne octo, some um, lights, a uh, thermal control system, battery, and some solar panels. And also, let's just look around and see. Oh, here we go. Miniaturization. We need this because it's going to give us the Clampertron Docking Port Junior. We need that. Um, let's go and look and see if there's anything else like immediately we need. I don't think there is. This will be probably be our next one. Fuel systems is, is handy. We'll grab that next, but we're gonna wait. We're gonna save the rest of the science and come back to it at a later date. I've already accepted the mission for mission control, so let's go ahead and start designing our rocket. So this is going to be essentially what the Gemini missions did in real life. It's a uh, you know of course Gemini meaning twin. They had two ships go up into space and try to dock with each other. Of course, once they got up there, they actually had a hell of a time um, actually doing it because orbital mechanics at the time wasn't completely understood. So um, it was actually difficult for them to, um, to to dock with each other. They got close to each other, but they were having a hard time actually uh, approaching the two crafts the right way. And uh, it was kind of an interesting time. You can read more about that on your own. But um, yeah, the Gemini missions, had they, they kind of had a hard time figuring out exactly how things work in space. In space, you can't just point at something and go. <laughs> it's a little bit different. <laughs> so anyway, we've got the command pad. We have a or pod, a heat shield for coming back down, a clampertron for actually docking with the other craft. We're going to put a fuel tank on and a terrier engine. I love this terrier engine. We're going to put 
some mono propellant on the ship as well. I'm going to put two of those on. Mono propellant is a type of fuel, and it's a type of fuel for our thruster blocks. We're going to see how those work later, but essentially they, they can thrust in uh, all different directions, so you can use them to move laterally, which is exactly what we're going to be using them for. They work best when they're um, on either side of the center of mass, so that's why I'm putting them like they are here. You know, again, maybe you'll see why that's the case in a little bit. I'll move these down so they look a little bit better. Can I turn them? Let's just turn them. There we go. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Alright, so the thruster blocks are going to help kind of um, actually mate the two ships together. Um, I didn't put a decoupler here. Let's go ahead and put a decoupler there. Okay, this is the only thing that's going to be returning. And to that end, we're going to put a couple of chutes on. Alright, and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put on some um, some headlights so we can actually see that'd be kind of nice um, all right separate the stages real quick now this is going to give us a 1110 Delta V in space so that's gonna be a ton of Delta V way more than we actually need and that's okay um, Photo voltaic panels. There we go. Let's put a couple of those on the ship. And I'm going to put them. We're not going to be EVA. They're not going to be getting out of the vehicle, so I'm going to put them here and here. But you know what? Let's do this instead. There we go. There we go. Let's put them like that. To ensure that uh, we can get sunlight no matter where, if how we're oriented. Alright. Yeah, so far as I can tell, this is exactly what we need. Alright, let's now this is what's actually going to dock together. So how we get up in space. Another decoupler. And again we're gonna need about 3400 delta V to actually circularize an orbit around Kerbin. So that's the number we're gonna be shooting for. Let's go ahead and put the swivel on there. As always. Put some winglets. Okay, very cool. Um, this stage is 2,000 delta V in the atmosphere, so that's not going to be enough. We're going to need a little bit more. Let's uh, rotate those around. Put some decouplers on. And I think I'm going to go with the solid fuel solid fuel boosters to do this job for us to actually get us up in space there we go let's move these down here so they're in line with the other ones you know aesthetics is important in rocketry to a degree <laughs> uh, put some nose cones on the front of that let's strut it top and bottom Nice little jazz music playing. I love the music in this game. Alright. Let's uh, recalculate the delta V here. 2813. And then the top stage is going to have another thousand in space. So, just to, be care just to be safe, let's do a little bit more. 3,000 on this this whole thing here and then the rest of it can be done in space. I think this is going to be plenty for what we need. Oh, that was a mis miscalculating. Okay, so it's still 3,000 then. Alright, cool. Do a sanity check here. These all go off at the same time. The side boosters decouple. Then the main booster decouples. The uh, extraterrestrial rocket goes off. Eventually that's going to decouple and then parachutes to come back. Very cool. Yeah, this is going to be our docking vessel. We call this Docker Alpha because it's going up first. And Jeb is going to be the one manning the Docker Alpha. And let's just make a one more take a one more look at it 
to let's take one more look at it to see if we missed anything. I don't think we did. We don't need any science on this. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Yep. Let's go ahead and launch. That theme right there is the theme. You can probably tell that I based the intro music off of. All of the intros to my video I, I do myself. I'm a musician, and so I do my own music. And um, I try to, for the intros to these, let's launch. I try to take a piece of music that I really like from the game, something that I feel like um, kind of encapsulates the, uh, you know, the experience of the game the best I can. And then I, I do a little melody kind of like riffing off of that. It's only 10 seconds. I try to do under a 10 second intro so they're not too long. But um, anyway, that piece that we just heard a second ago was the one that I used for my intro. And then I have to edit some footage to, to be interesting. So I'm turning over almost immediately. This is a really stable craft, and he can handle it. So I'm turning over. You have to keep your craft oriented on that prograde or near that prograde marker when you decouple. Oh, okay. See, I was like... I was just saying to do this, and then I didn't do it myself. Let's do this again. That's a great example of what I was talking about. And I... Uh, I didn't follow my own advice as I was saying it. <laughs> so anyway, we're turning over pretty early here. What I'm saying is that the prograde marker is the direction that you're actually traveling. And then, of course, this V, this orange V marker, is the direction you're facing. So as these things decouple, they're going to be going along their prograde. But if your craft is twist-turned, like mine is, then it's going to go straight down and hit your craft. So when you're decoupling, you really want your craft to be facing your prograde marker. So I should have come back a little bit. I'll, I'll do it more this time. I got a little ambitious. There we go. There we go. Put it inside that prograde marker and then those things will decouple off and they won't come back and blow up your ship. Yeah, I wasn't paying enough attention as I did it. Anyway, I'm trying to turn more and more shallow to buy me some time and space. The Docker Alpha is going to be the higher of the two vessels. We'll talk more about that in a minute. He's going to be the one that's further out. And I'm going to park him at 100 kilometers. So here we are at 60. I'm going to keep a heading here at 30 degrees. I'm going to heading, well, like I'm going to keep my angle down 30 degrees to the horizon. And just wait until my apoapsis is at 100 kilometers. beautiful ship. She's flying gorgeously. Love this. 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Kill it. Now select your apps and let's make a maneuver to circularize. In this upper ship we want to be as circular as possible. The circular, the more circular the better. That is to say the less eccentric, uh, eccentric, eccentric, the better. I don't know why I struggled with that word. Look at that. 100, 338, 188, so 300 meters difference between the two. That's perfect. That is a beautiful circular orbit. Now I'm going to orient my ship onto the maneuver node. I have a burn time of 38 seconds, which tells me I need to burn at 15, uh, six, 17 seconds. I'm sorry, not 17. Uh, 19? 19 seconds. I need to burn at T minus 19. I can speed ahead a little bit. And also, T minus 19. Also, this little three here tells us that all of this is going to be burning on the third stage of the rocket. So this bottom part here, that's you're going to be able to, um, to do all of our circularizing for us. So this upper stage, isn't going to have to use any fuel at all, which is incredibly wasteful, but it's also good to have a little bit of, uh, I would say it's better to be over-engineered than under-engineered, right? So. Hmm. Sip the beer real quick. Moving on. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to kill my throttle and just ease the... Uh, here we go. 
really want this to be as circular as possible. 99, 313, 100, So not as good as it was when it was planned, but still pretty good. Um, again, it's kind of wasteful, but I'm going to go ahead and ditch this bottom stage. And I'm going to do it kind of in a funny way. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to spin the ship. I'm like getting a nice little spin going. And let's go ahead and a couple. There we go. Kind of fling it away from the ship so that it goes off on its own course and is nowhere near this craft. That's what I want. I'm going to go ahead and point my my ship along the normal vector here. Kind of ensuring that I'm getting a, a lot of sunlight on these photovoltaic panels. I'm about to get a nice um, eclipse with the moon there. A lunar eclipse. So oh yeah, look at that. He's going way far away. So very cool. Now that he's up in space, let's go back to the space center. And uh, Valentina wants to join the party. Let's go ahead and send her up as well. Let's go back to the VAB. As soon as the thing lit, there we go, VAB. I said VAB, there we go. Docker Bravo. It'd be a little bit easier to uh, deal with these ships later if they're named differently. Valentina's in the pilot seat. Let's go ahead and launch. <clears throat> now, what she's going to do, because she's going to be behind in the orbit, right? Like Alpha went ahead and, and went on. So now that Bravo has to play catch up, she is going to go in a lower orbit, which may not make a whole lot of sense initially. But if you think of think of two runners running around a track, like a track and field track, you know, um, assuming they're going the same speed, the runner on the inside lane is going to pass up the one going on the outside lane, right? Because he's traveling less distance. And that's kind of what's going on here. It's a little bit of an oversimplification of, of what's happening here. Uh, my brother, who has a degree in uh, physics, with a concentration in astronomy, has explained this to me, and it gets a little bit more complicated than what I just described. But that is kind of the, the brass tacks of it. Let's go ahead and decouple. There we go. Okay. But that's, that's kind of the long and short of it, is that the craft that's on the... Uh, assuming two concentric rings, the craft that's on the inside is going to pass up the one that's on the outside. So since I'm launching after Jeb launched, I want to have a lower orbit so that my uh, orbital ring is inside of his orbit. And we'll kind of see that taking effect here momentarily. Again, I'm going to turn over to about 30 degrees. And Valentina's going to go about 80 kilometers. He went up 100. We're going to go 80. There we go. Now the greater distance between the two orbits is the is the the rate at which the two crafts will catch up. Okay. So if he was at a perfectly circular orbit of 100 kilometers and I was at a perfectly circular orbit at 99 kilometers, it would take I would catch up, but it would take quite a long time. So here's 77 and 82. That's actually okay. It's not imperative that Valentina's ship be in a perfect, perfect, perfectly circular orbit. It is not imperative at all that that is the case, so long as the orbit is within the altitude of the other orbit. So Anyway, the greater distance between the two is the speed difference, how, how fast or how slow the two crafts will catch up is what I was trying to say. So here we go. I have a... Um, this burn time is incorrect. There we go. When you go in space, it recalculates. So instead of a minute and 20 seconds, it's actually only 52 seconds. Now, excuse me, I got the hiccups. So I need to burn at 26 seconds, T minus 26. Fire. And same thing, I've managed to have a nice, uh, efficient launch. So, um... I'm going to be able to do this whole thing on the third stage with some fuel left over too. So I actually over budgeted quite a lot. But that's okay. I said that for everything. I did X, Y, and Z. That's okay. <clears throat> oh, 
right? I can get a... I can right click this so that goes away. Or maybe not. Yeah, uh, whatever. I have to detract some of this space junk so that it's not cluttering up the, uh, the HUD. Or not the HUD, but like my view, you know? Alright, there we go. Alright, what are we looking at here? Periaps of 74, Apple Apps of 84, that's fine by me. So I'm going to do is I'm going to set... Oh, well, hold on, before I do anything else, let's go ahead and... Let's go fling this rocket into space. Same way I did with hers. Or, oh, I'm sorry, with his. I'm flying hers right now. There we go. Spin it around, spin it around, spin it around. And as soon as we're facing normal, I'll launch it. One, two, three, fling! There we go. You go away. All right. Very cool. Bye. Okay. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to select her craft. Nope. It's kind of hard to because of the breeze in the way. Okay. I'm going to go back to the space center, the tracking station rather. And I'm going to untrack. Well, I could just do that. I can just turn that off. Let's go Alpha Bravo. I'm sorry, Alpha Bravo. Docker Bravo and fly. That, that little option up there will stop tracking that item so I don't have to uh, to look at it anymore. There we go. Now I'll select her target. Select her as a target. Take the Docker Alpha as a target. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look kind of side on. And I want to see if our orbits are in plane. That is to say, if these, two, if these circles were like solid plates, you know, would they be kind of one? And they are. Look at them. They're not, uh, it doesn't make an X, let's put it that way. That would be like an extreme case. But the two orbits are not in this kind of configuration. They are perfectly flat with each other. So I don't have to make any kind of adjustments there. So what I'm going to do to catch up to her, you're going to catch up naturally anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm taking a maneuver, and I'm going to adjust my apoats to wherever hers is, right? So hers is going to be at 98 to 100. So all my apoats is to go up to about 100, which means at some part in the orbit, some point in the orbit, we will be at the same altitude. And then I'm going to drag this uh, the maneuver node around and kind of see uh, where I can perform this that will put us uh, close together. And right now, there isn't a good place for that, so I'm going to warp around the planet, and I'll try again momentarily. If you look here, look at the distance. I'm catching up 580 kilometers, 570 kilometers, and so on and so forth, so I am catching up slowly. The thing is that even if I caught up to her, the difference between my orbit and her orbit would be the distance between the two crafts, and right now that's 20 kilometers, approximately. So I need to do some kind of burn. I need to make some kind of adjustment so that way we, uh, when we do approach each other, we're not 20 kilometers apart. That's too far. So I'm going to spend some time just kind of traveling around Kerbin. Catching up, catching up, catching up. Here we are at 450 kilometers. Or, yeah, kilometers. Let's go ahead and try that again. Set up another maneuver node. Set my app lapses to about 100. There we are. I'm going to move this node around and see if there's a place. Getting closer, but not quite yet. Getting closer. Oh, perhaps I didn't explain. These two orange things that pop up are going to... It's the target's position and my position. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at these two things to be one over the other. I think perhaps I didn't explain that. So that's... I apologize for that. So let's keep going. <clears throat> Let's make another lap around the planet and uh, take a look again. I'm just waiting for that for that right for the window where that burn is going to put us right next to each other. That's what I'm looking for. Ideally, I'll be doing this during the day so we can see. But here we are, getting closer and closer. Let's go ahead and try another maneuver. Oh, 
Alright, set my app, my uh, app wraps to about 100 and move this maneuver around. Ah. Right there. Look how close that gets us. Starting to get pretty close. So, not quite yet. A little bit more. <clears throat> Move a little bit further along the orbit and try again. Let's try right here. Ah, ding bingo. There it is right there. Separation 4.1 kilometers. I like to be under 5, so 4.1 is it's fine. So there we go, and it's going to take 14 meters a second of, th of uh, delta V, which is nothing. So I'm going to take my thrust and I'm going to limit it all the way down to like, let's see, a reasonable number. I'm looking at the burn time here, burn time of 10 seconds. That's, that's good. So there we go. Beautiful. So now we just uh, warp around until we get to that maneuver node. We're going to make a little bit of a burn. It's going to raise our apoaps to the same apoapsis that, um... Docker Alpha has, and if you line it up at just the right time, you get a, you get a close approach of 4.1 kilometers, and then we'll see how to do the rest of the rendezvous at that point, but for now, that's close enough. You can see these two craft are just getting closer and closer together. I'm going to slow down my warp. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and orient myself, and while I have a little bit of time before maneuver, I'm going to make sure that my engine is activated. Sometimes that can happen where it's not activated. Alright. Want myself on that maneuver node. I'm waiting for T-5 to actually perform the maneuver. T-5. Trying to hold it on that blue marker. Reduce the thrust. Okay. That's fine. What did we wind up with? 4.2, so we actually did better. Beautiful. I'm gonna quick save here. F5 to quick save. And I'm gonna use this opportunity to explain a couple things. I'm gonna keep the thrust limiter pretty low when we're doing these, these things. Let me explain a couple things about the nav ball <clears throat> before we actually have to use it. This episode is coming to an end pretty pretty close, but we, we're coming together. That's uh, that's Jeb right there. You can see him off in the distance. We're getting closer and closer and closer. So I'm going to look around the nav ball real quick, and we'll see um, a couple things. I have my prograde marker. If I orient my ship, you can see um, that with respect to the target, see right here I have the target selected. With respect to the target, this is where I'm heading. This right here is your actual target. So if I point directly at it, you can see that I am lined up. I'm pointing directly at that target. Okay, on the reverse side, we have the re the uh, the retrograde. Okay, so this is the exact opposite of the way that I'm traveling with respect to my target. And then we have the anti-target. So I'm at this point, if I'm pointing right here, I'm pointing my engine at the target now. When you're moving, when you're when you're adjusting your prograde, the prograde's going to want to go in the direction that you're burning, of, of that you're that you're facing. I mean, so if I would turn my engine on right now, this prograde marker would slowly start coming towards where I'm pointing, which makes perfect sense, right? If you start burning in a particular direction, the direction that you're actually traveling starts going that way. The reverse happens on the other side. Okay, so to get the retrograde marker onto the anti-target marker, I actually have to push it. I have to burn kind of like over here, and you're going to see this little marker will start to travel this way, away from where I'm burning. If that, if that wasn't clear, you'll see it in action in a moment. But ultimately what we want to do here is we want to be traveling, we want to face the target, and we want our prograde to be directly on the target as well, so that we are traveling exactly with the target. The other thing to pay attention to is that, with, with reference to the target, I'm moving 98 9 meters a second. That's really fast. That's really quite quick. So I'm going to have to do something to slow down my speed uh, with relation to the target. 
to dock the two vessels together, you don't want there to be any speed difference between the two of you. you I mean, obviously, you don't want to like, crash into it, and you don't want to be flying away from it. You want the relative speed between the two to be zero. So, keep all those things in mind as we're doing this. Because as I'm doing this, it might be a little bit hard to explain exactly what's happening. But here we go, we're getting closer and closer and closer together. Closer and closer, and at our closest approach, we'll be four kilometers apart. Then here we are. So I'm going to go ahead and kill our relative speed. So I'm going to start burning. Retrograde. Pushing that retrograde marker onto the anti-target marker. You see how I push it? Push it? Okay. Now what you'll see is that because our orbits aren't exactly the same, they're getting closer now that I've done that, but our orbits aren't exactly the same. So as we go around our orbit, these markers will start to move, so I'll have to make another adjustment. But right now, I'm traveling towards my target. My prograde marker is on the target. I'm also facing it, and I'm going 5.2 meters a second. So I'm actually traveling directly at my target. I'm going to warp forward. And you'll see that this number is starting to decrease, 3.5, 3.4. But as we go around our path, my prograde marker starts to fall off the target. Okay. Likewise, I'm also picking up some speed, which I don't want. So I'm going to burn over here. Pushing that retrograde marker onto the anti-target. Like that. And now again, I'm moving t directly towards my target at 5.1 meters a second. As we travel, the prograde starts to drift. So I'll make another adjustment. Pushing that retrograde marker onto the anti-target. Now I'm going 2.6 meters a second with respect to it, which is a little slow. So now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to pull that prograde marker onto the target. 5.5 meters a second is fine. We'll warp ahead. As we warp, we see those two nodes move. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to start by pulling. I'm going to burn over here to pull that prograde marker onto the target. There we go. I'm now going 9 meters a second directly at my target. I'm going to warp ahead so we get a little closer together. Nope. They're starting to separate a little too much for my taste, so I'm going to make an adjustment. And all of these adjustments are, are essentially making our orbits one and the same. Because our orbits weren't the same, but now they're, they're getting close to being exactly the same orbit. And at the same time, we're moving closer and closer together. So here we are, moving closer and closer. Oop, my target's moving way off of it. I'm going to pull it back on. Hopefully it's clear how you pull your prograde marker and you push your retrograde marker. Let's bring it back up. We're going to bring it up to 10 meters a second, just so I can kind of speed things along here. And then look up, there we go, now we're within a kilometer of it. I'm going to pull the prograde. We're going to warp a little bit. Now our, tar or our, our, um, our orbits are becoming more and more similar, so these, these, these markers are going to drift less and less. Let's take a second to kind of push that retrograde. We're just lining ourselves up so we're traveling directly at our target. Now we're coming in pretty hot. So I'm going to start slowing down. I'm at 9 meters a second. 8 meters a second. 5. 2.8. That's pretty good. Now we're about 50 meters away, I'm going to go ahead and kill my velocity. So I'm going to burn retrograde until I'm traveling 0 meters a second with respect to my target. 1.1 meters a second. Very cool. So now we are, we are f just floating next to each other, drifting very slowly towards each other. Okay? Now I'm going to use the bracket key to switch my view over to its view, or his view, or her view. 
I'm going to target it. And I'm going to point my ship. Or Jeb, rather, is going to point his ship at Valentina's ship. Putting the orientation marker here onto the target marker. So now we're facing directly at each other. I'm going to switch back to Valentina's ship. And I'm going to turn on my RCS. And I'm also going to go into docking mode. It's a whole other control scheme to do here. But now you're going to see that instead of moving... Um, Oops, I'm actually pointing the wrong way. Hold on. There we go. Put it on the prograde marker. There we go. Go back to docking mode, turn on RCS, and then now I'm using these little thrusters. And instead of turning the ship, we're actually just going to be kind of moving the ship laterally. So I'm facing him, he's facing me. My prograde is on its his the target meter. And I can make very small adjustments to slowly kind of tease these two ships together. I'm gonna to quickly face back just to make sure that he's facing directly onto my ship. There we go. And as we get close, I'm going to kill our relative velocity. So we're going nice and slow. I'm going to turn on my lights, turn on his lights. There we go. Exactly that. Target, prograde, and our orientation are all lined up, and we slowly drift towards each other. Boom. Gorgeous. Look at that. We have mated two vehicles in space. Contract complete. Oops, that was an old one. Pulse for milestone. Explore the moon. 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 There we go. Beautiful. Synchronized free falling isn't nearly as daunting as it sounds. Very cool. Now I have a ton of Delta V because I barely used any Delta V from these two crafts. But what I can do. Let's go ahead and turn staging mode back on. And there we go. I'm controlling from here, right? I'm controlling from this ship right now. I'm going to turn off that engine. Yeah, there we go. I'm only going to use this engine. And I'm just going to show you something that you can do. If you alt-click this fuel tank, and then you alt-click this fuel tank. Uh, let me try that again. If you huh why isn't it doing it <laughs> the game turns makes me out to be a liar I don't know why okay well there's a way you can transfer fuel oh I wonder if I don't have um oh I, I think I don't have that um technology unlocked that's what it is okay okay in the future we'll be able to alt click the two vessels and you can transfer fuel between them. So that, that'll be important later, but I can't do it now because I don't have it unlocked. That's why. Okay. So anyway, there we go. We are in space. I don't want this episode to go forever and ever and ever. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until we're at a nice sunny part of the planet. So we're going to go around and then we're going to deorbit them. Now, you could absolutely undock these ships and deorbit them one at a time, but I think I'm going to deorbit them together. And uh, we're going to deorbit them over the desert here. Uh, probably about there ish. I don't know. Alright, so all we're going to do is we're going to burn all of our fuel retrograde. There we are. Let's burn all of it. Why not? There's no reason not to at this point. You can't save it. Burn all of our fuel retrograde. To deorbit the two together. I'm also going to go ahead and pin this up here so I can use it later. <clears throat> Alright, can I, uh, I can't warp. Okay, so we're just going to sit here and watch this. 
that's fine. All right, slow down. Turn these lights off, I guess. No reason to have those lights on. Yeah, it's a very cool thing, docking craft in space. I think that's that's a, a ton of fun. And that's one of my favorite parts of the game. You feel really accomplished doing that. I love it. So let's do that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn prograde and turn this engine on. Now again, I'm not actually burning prograde, but since I'm controlling from this ship, his prograde is his anti-retrograde, uh, so um, it's having the same effect. So let's go ahead and slow down as much as possible. This is a really light craft, so I'm not worried about the kind of pol uh, ballistic trajectory we're about to uh, about to give ourselves. Because we're about, we about to come in really steep, because we're slowing down quite a lot. In fact, let's go ahead and look at the view. Yeah, we're coming down pretty steep. But these are, are really light vessels, so it's not going to be a big deal. Okay. Um, I don't know why you're doing that, but then you're done. All right, now let's go ahead and spin, 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 and release. I said release. And here we go. <laughs> Fling those guys out there. Very cool. That's neat. All right. Let's hold a retrograde orientation. And uh, let's speed through the uh, through the air gonna come down pretty hot but like I say these are pretty pretty light vessels so it's not, not that big a deal no at least it shouldn't be could have made a big fool, fool of myself here yeah there we go nice and slow as we enter the uh, atmosphere the Kerbal atmosphere here we go parachutes and before I go completely vertical I'm going to I'm gonna wait until we're not not exactly vertical but almost vertical and undock the two and there we go let's float down to the planet I'm gonna turn off SAS <laughs> well, that's the, uh, the, the, the things landing, the engines landing. Watching this guy coming down was, that was a little frightening. But there we go. So that is how you, you dock two vessels in space. Um, yeah, another nice like, successful mission. Felt pretty good about that one. Um, man, it takes forever to float down with these parachutes on. Jeez. I feel like this takes forever. Um, a little bit of a longer mission, a little bit of a longer episode, but uh, this is an important um, mechanic to understand. Uh, again, touring with the idea of uh, kind of speeding through these things in future episodes, but at least in this one it's important to, uh, to, to see it happen, I think. Here we go. And... Oh, man. Okay, so what happened there, and I've said this before, is that the warp can sometimes just, like, destroy things. So you saw we were going down, we have exactly the same craft, we were going down at almost the exact same altitude. There is no reason that that should have happened. So with that in mind, I'm going to revert. <laughs> I'm going to revert back to my last save and do this. I'm going to do it off camera, but I'm going to do it, and I'm going to not time warp. You saw that. You know just as well as I do. I, I landed that thing, just like I landed this one. That's, But the game, I just accidentally crashed it into the ground, so I don't know why I did that. Anyway, I'm going to reload my last save and save uh, Valentina's life. Um, that's so ridiculous. But eh, the game is its a complicated game. So Anyway, that's that. Thank you guys so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, I wish I didn't have to stare at a... Uh, <laughs> 
you know him being alive and her being dead at the end of this episode but anyway i'll catch you guys in the next episode thanks a bunch like comment subscribe if you're so inclined and i'll catch you guys next time